Good morning, Inspired Nation. So excited to be here for our Tuesday tips at 10 o'clock. Um, today we're going to talk about niche marketing, but before we get into that and allow people to jump on here and um, join us here today, um, we're going to actually have, you know, if you're joining us, go ahead and, and introduce yourself. Uh, a lot of people are trying to, you know, take advantage of social media. So here's one way to do that. So down below, as you're joining us, go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, your business. Um, I'm perfectly fine with you tagging your business Facebook page, your website. Tell us what makes you different. Uh, why should we, uh, why should we go out there and look at your site? Good morning, Michael. It's great to see you. Um, do me a favor. If you're jumping on right above in the post, it allows you to click the uh, give permission to StreamYard to show your um, who you are. Uh, otherwise, you show up on my screen as um, you know anonymous or just a Facebook user. And I'd love to be able to respond back to you individually. Uh, so make sure, like I said, go ahead as we're waiting on everybody to jump on take advantage, especially if you're watching this back on replay um, in the stream down below uh, your name, your company name, the industry you'd love uh, for us to associate with you, uh, what makes you special. And of course, go ahead and tell us what your target market is, because that's really what we're going to talk about today is understanding uh, that that niche branding of how you can narrow down to your target market, which just goes right in line to what we've been talking about here. Um, you know, last week we talked about it, you know, expanding your business by, you know, really kind of uh, attracting your ideal target market. And today's, you know, I'm just going to continue on that because it really kind of comes from an inspiration of working with some of our clients over the last two weeks. Uh, we've really been narrowing down uh, our focus with some of our clients on their target markets, having them, um, you know, rephrase their words, their descriptions, the attributes of the target markets. And I love the aha moments. I love by really kind of taking away what I call the cobwebs or too much information, then um, we're able to actually focus and see the path we need to move forward, actually how to build a, a marketing um, strategy, whether or not you're using traditional marketing, traditional advertising, word of mouth marketing, you know, all of that, whether you're doing uh, outdoor advertising, radio, TV, you know, before you even invest into any of that, you have to take time and just really narrow down to what your target market is. Otherwise doing things like picking, you know, font size or images or colors and, and all of those things that sometimes come into play when you're building your marketing, your branding, uh, you know, you could be saying that your target market is one thing, but actually attracting a completely different target market. Yes, Michael, I love StreamYard. Um, uh, anyone that's out there uh, interested in uh, doing multiple broadcasting out to your uh, different social media streams, we've tried several over the last year and a half. And um, I'm so glad someone recommended StreamYard for us. It has been very uh, easy to jump on here and use. Uh, so we highly, highly recommend it. Uh, so if you'd like to learn more about it, you can reach out to me. I don't mind showing you what we've learned and, and answering any questions out there, but it's, it's been a great, it's been a great resource for us. So let's go ahead and, and jump on. Like I said, if you're joining us here this morning um, or watching this on replay, go ahead and um, you know let us know you're here. Um, so one of the things we're going to talk about is uh, you know niche marketing is really the concept of let's face the fear first. A lot of times when I'm doing a workshop or I'm, I'm speaking to a large audience or even working individually with a client for the first time and uh, we begin going down the process of discovering what their target market is, I will tell you that that is probably our biggest roadblock we hit first is really kind of dealing with the fear that by saying we're going to you know drill down to an ideal target market we're going to get very specific um it it scares people uh because they're afraid that you know we're basically saying you're only going to pick up one target market and you know there's that fear that there's you know other people that could hire them other people that could buy something from them and they would lose that opportunity and what 
I try to get across to people is that when you try to go out there and attract, you know, everyone to your business, it's almost like, um, you know, Charlie Brown's teacher. And I, I, most of my followers know I use this as a reference because you're, you're speaking, but no one understands. And it's not really attracting or talking to any one person. And so, um, you know, the thing you want to do is in order to grow your business is if you can find your ideal client base, someone, remember we talked about this last week, someone that you enjoy providing the product or service, someone that, that when you provide that product or service, it makes you money. Okay. And then for them to be a VIP client is that they also go out there and recommend your product or services to others. Now, if you can, identify what that looks like for you, then if you can repeat that target market, and that's one of the things we talk about here at Inspired is we talk about building a strategy, um, executing your strategy, and then repeating what works. And, and really it's about, you know, repeating and getting down to executing the fundamentals flawlessly. Okay. So every time you're out there trying to catch everyone that could be, uh, you know, use your product or services, you actually sometimes, uh, hurt your business because you're not being known for one thing. And so, especially in this day. So let's talk about everybody being on social media. And of course, everything that we're doing here on social media also works when we're back out and we're going to be fully engaged again as the economy opens up. But what I love is making my clients think about, you know, taking advantage of this time that we're literally watching target markets, watching trigger words in Facebook posts. I mean, how many of you in a given day see in search ofs or looking for recommendations or, you know, celebrations or challenges and, and, and literally trigger words and, and challenges that we offer the solution to are just right in front of us. And we have that opportunity to, um, you know, to make that connection. And I love having that ability to help someone solve their challenge or, you know, uh, their problem that they're having or the roadblock that they're on by putting them in touch with someone who has the solution. And I always say I have the best of all worlds here is that I get to be the matchmaker or the connection maker with, um, you know, with my clients, my friends and my family, with my referral partners, my referral generators. And um, and it's a win, win, win situation, right? The client, um, you know, or the prospect uh wins if their challenge is solved. The referral generator wins if it goes to close business. And of course I win because I've created some credibility points, um, you know, built up my credibility relationship with all parties involved. And, uh, and that's just a good place to be because ultimately down the road, um, you know, if you're, friends, family, and colleagues uh, need something else, they're going to respect your recommendations, your introductions. And that's just going to help when it comes to really increasing your value as a referral generator. And then of course your referral generators are going to, if you're surrounding yourself with the right mindset, are going to want to um, return that favor. You know, they're going to want to dump into your success story the same way you've dumped into theirs. And, um, but all that, okay, all of that wonderful, wonderful goodness there when it comes to referral marketing, um, really is more effective if I have a true understanding of what I'm looking for on my referral generator's behalf. And the more that I'm engaged with learning what their trigger words, you know, that helps because I, I am wanting, willing, and able to learn that. But the referral generator, my referral generators, each one of you, you have to train me on what an ideal client for you looks like. And that needs to start with you really looking at your business and really looking at, you know, where have 
Where have you attracted clients before? Um, what is it that caused them to pick up the phone, cause them to click on your page, cause them to go search you out on Google? You know, what is it that created that need for them to need your product or service? And so, and then of course, you know, we talked about within that need, is that the phone call you want? Okay. So even though you might be able to service a lot of people, you know, we want to be able to look very specific for your ideal target market. So some examples you guys can do, and this is really just a challenge for me to throw out to a lot of you. And I would love for you, you know, to leave in the thread below, create a comment thread where you're educating us on your business, you know, say, this is my business and this is my ideal target market. And then if someone in the thread, if you're watching this back, if you see someone there and it's still broad, you, you know, it's maybe it's someone that you're familiar with, or you have the potential to open up that recommendation and introduction for them, but you need more information ask them, you know, reply, send them a personal message. This here now on social media is where we need to create dialogue and where we create dialogue is in the comment threads, right? And this is where we want to um, ask questions, start to engage with each other reach out and set up strategy sessions with one another. And all of these things are going to help us grow our business or continue to move forward during this time while we're sheltering in place, but also it's going to create the momentum or begin to um, have you focus and market and branding right now for when the economy opens up. Okay. So what I'm going to challenge you guys to do is when you think about your target market, you know, um, niche down. So we talked about the ideal. What is your product or service that you enjoy doing the most? Um, which one makes you the most money? And, um, and, and if you can think about those product and services, one exercise that we have challenged our clients to do is we will have them um, list out uh, maybe by department or by product line, um, you know, maybe by their services. If you offer personal services, you know, really kind of think about that and list them out and then take them through that test. You know, does this product or service actually make us money? Do I enjoy uh, providing this product or service? You know, um, if I'm going to get that phone call, is this the phone call I'd like to get? Or as I would say, go look at your existing client base and say, which one of these would I like to repeat? OK, so there's multiple ways you can look at that. And then once you have identified the product or service that, quite frankly, if we were, you know, if you had the opportunity to jump on and tell us this would be a great way for you to uh, think of me, you weren't sitting there trying to always say it's not ragu. You're not trying to throw everything in there. OK, uh, you want to be very specific to a product and then identify what is that target market um, need? You know, so what is the target market that is attracted to that particular product or that particular service? Then rank them. OK, and the ones that are scoring like, oh, it's OK if I, you know, if I get this uh, phone call, but it's not really the one I want, then the last thing I want you to do right now when you're really trying to grow your business more efficiently and more effectively is to go and look at the one that ranks the highest. It could be one or two. I'm not saying that you have to only have one target market. Maybe you have multiple product or services that you enjoy doing and make you money, but list them and think about them differently. Do they attract the same target market? Is it, uh, what are the challenges that that product or service solves? What are the trigger words someone might write? Okay, we're in uh, uh, virtual. What is something that they might share on their social media? What is something that they might say in a conversation? What is something that um, we might be able to recognize as uh, a roadblock with their business that could cause them to need uh, you know, product or service? And I want you to make a list. And the more that you can write about that target market, the more that you can describe it. And you know, um, is it in a certain geographical area? Is it an age bracket? Is it an income you know, level? Is it a life event? Is it a business event? Is it, um, you know, is it 
family oriented? Is it an individual? You know, the more you can describe that target market, the better you're going to be at training other people to look for it, recognize it. Because quite frankly, we've got to find that prospect for you first. So it's all about the who first. And then it's about the how. How do we recommend you? How do we make that introduction? So it takes time to train that, but let's tackle first the who. Okay. Let's tackle first the who. A lot of times I'll work with clients and I'll say, you know, what is a great referral opportunity for you? What is your target market? And, you know, we'll get the, even if they're trying to narrow down and they'll say, okay, a, a great target market for me is um, moms. Okay. And then I'm like, okay, but what, what about being a mom makes them need to buy your product or service? You know, just having the title mom and, you know, and so it could be, you know, a mom who has, you know, a certain age children at home, a mom who is going to be an empty nester, a mom who um, maybe has a child that is disabled, a mom who, you know, uh, is taking care of, you know, their parents and taking care of their children. So, you know, add that extra little words to your sentence. Okay. Complete the thought process. Instead of just saying a great referral for me is, uh, you know, college kids. Okay. Uh, instead say, you know, a great referral for me is a, someone going off to college that is going to be going, you know, a couple of States away, uh, someone who's going to be going to college and they, um, you know, they're going to be staying in a dorm, someone who is going to college and they're going to need financial aid, uh, someone. And so you begin to finish out the sentence. Maybe also it could be, I hear this all the time. This one, this one I cringe on, um, small business owners are a great target market for me. And I'm like, in what industry? And, you know, is there a particular person at the small business? And what is it about that small business that means that they might need your product or service? One of the examples this week, we worked with a client and she uh, is in the position to sell, you know, Xerox copiers and printers. And when we began at the beginning of social uh, distancing and, and sheltering at home, um, one of the things that we were doing, because most of the time her target market is a B2B. And here, you know, I was sitting there thinking, okay, now that y'all are sheltering at home, you're not out and about, what is one way on social media that we can be looking for an opportunity for you? And we kept drilling down and drilling down. And it finally came to, you know, a great referral for her was, um, businesses that, uh, you know, where the professional is used to printing at the office, you know, uh, used to having, you know, nice equipment to either print, digital, whatever it is. And now they're sheltering at home and they're working with, you know, uh, an at home desk printer. And uh, she said, look, we can we can drop ship. We can get all of that. Um, you know, so if they're an attorney, if they're an accountant, you know, if they're uh, used to needing not only security for their documents, but, you know, printing and everything else, she goes, we can drop ship in while they're sheltering at home. And just that little bit of switch, instead of just saying, you know, accounting firms and things like that, well, obviously we're not all out and about right now. And so what it was is she educated us on a specific need. Okay. She made it real. I could actually picture someone now having to bring their office in home. And, you know, I know what it's like to go where you have all these really nice equipment, all your nice monitors, all your nice stuff. And now you're trying to work from home. And so, you know, again, just narrowing down that sentence, it makes a huge difference when you can think about, um, you know, finishing the sentence. And I guess that's my biggest thing. Finish the sentence. The more that you can describe your target market, um, the better it is. And so if you think about it, if I'm trying to finish the sentence, then that doesn't mean that I'm putting, you know, everything that I do, every target market that I do in one sentence, right? Because I need to describe my target market the best that I can. And that's really where I want you guys to think about it. Um, another one could be, instead of saying anyone looking for a job, 
you know, again, say anyone looking for a job that needs to work from home, um, anyone looking for a job that is, you know, focusing on contract trade, anyone looking for a job that wants to be able to have flexible hours, anyone looking for a job that needs benefits. So instead of just saying anyone looking for a job would be a great referral, finish it out. Okay. And so my, my challenge to all of you again to, on here is to go ahead, tell us who you are, tag it. And I don't care if a lot of you are like, Amy, you know me, I promise you other people are reading this stream. So take advantage of your name, your company name, your industry, focus on one product. Okay. Focus on one product. So for example, with Inspired, we offer a lot of things. We do graphic design work. We do online consulting. We do personal consulting. We do corporate training. I wouldn't come in here in one thread and say, okay, this is everything that I want you guys to do. You know, when I'm trying to educate you on my target markets, instead I would break it down. Okay. Even within those different services, you know, what is one thing that I can train you guys today on to look for a target market? Now, tomorrow I might come on and say, okay, here's another target market that you might run across. And the reason why I want to educate you on the different ones is because some of you on here may have connections or see a news feed that has this target market for me. And I've equipped you to look for my who and educate you on how to bring me up. And then someone else on here, based on what you do and who you're friends with and what groups you're in, you might see another target market for me. As long as I'm educating you on the target markets, I want to call to my business. Okay. Not the ones that are going to cost me money, not the ones that, you know, really, you know, I'm okay if they find me, but it's not really what I'm looking for. Instead, I want to attract my ideal client. OK, and that's really what we're doing here. So my challenge today on the tips is it's OK to get very specific. You know, niche marketing or niche marketing, whichever way you want to pronounce that is really about focusing down. And I promise you, the more you focus down on your who, the bigger opportunity you have of expanding your business because you're going from that Charlie Brown's teacher where we really, you know, it's just such an unfocused way for us to think about you to a very lasered focused way of thinking about you, that association to target market to you. And the more that you can do that for us, the better opportunity we have of actually helping you especially now as more and more people need maybe just that one referral, that one referral that can make a difference to, you know, making it another month, making it a couple of more weeks. Okay. And that's what we want to do. Now, if you're intrigued with this at all and you want to go deeper with this thought process, um, there's a couple of things you can join us. We are so busy this week. Uh, we have uh, created so many opportunities for you to be able to jump on and either work, uh, you know, very specific on a particular uh, thought process or strategy or come and just network with other like kinded, like minded professionals who want to uh, train each other on what our referrals are and how we can open up the doors for each other. So here's just a couple of things that are out there and I'll put this up here real quick so you guys can go out there and um, register. We've got uh, a webinar uh, tomorrow night at seven o'clock and we're going to be talking about ideal clients. So it is a true webinar. Um, it's live. Uh, you're not going to be in the chat role though. You're in the room and it's live Q and a, we're going to be working through the process of really identifying um, what your target market is very similar to what we just did with our clients earlier uh, this week. Um, then there's a couple of opportunities for you to network. So Wednesday night's more about training and strategy, but tonight, at seven o'clock, we are hosting an iNetwork meeting. It is a uh, it is a mastermind roundtable uh, where you jump in with other professionals and uh, we're going to celebrate. There's some education and then we do call to actions, ways that we can help each other. So we have a new group starting tonight at seven o'clock. And so I'd love for you guys to join us for that. And then if that doesn't work, we've got two on Thursday. So we have one at 1130 and we have one at 7 p.m. So you have an opportunity for that. 
And then just when you, I, I, I don't even know why this week is absolutely insane. But the first Friday of every month, we have uh, for our women, professional women out there, we have our connections over coffee meeting, which is again, another opportunity for us to lean into each other's business and learn more about how we can help each other, uh, you know, grow our business, support our business. So lots of opportunities out there for you to work, you know, on your business. And uh, while you're sitting at home, maybe you've got a a little extra time maybe time management isn't as big a challenge right now as it will be when the economy starts opening back up so let's lean into your business and join us here with inspired uh, for the i network meetings our wednesday night webinars we welcome each and every one of you to come on here and let us see if we can help you think a little differently in order to expand your business if this isn't for you but you know someone it would benefit feel free to go out there and inspired nation hit some of our, you know, invite someone in there so that they can see this information. Also guys, thank you so much for jumping on here for Tuesday's tips at 10 o'clock. If you have a particular topic that you have a question about or that you'd like me to touch on, um, leave that in a comment or send me a personal message. I'd love to be able to steer these things on Tuesday and meet you where you're at and be able to um, share just some insights out there on some different ways. Uh, guys, have a fantastic day. And of course, I hope to see some of you in some of our inspired events this week. Remember to go out and inspire others.